after building 100 plus websites for clients on multiple platforms and all that, the process is the same. It doesn't matter if you're doing an online course, a membership, a multi-sales page, uh, just a list building, doesn't matter. I'm going to teach you the exact six-step framework that you need to follow to get your website live. And it doesn't matter what type of website you're thinking with. It's, it's all the same process because you could be thinking, I want to do a funnel. I want to do a landing page. I want to do an online course. It doesn't matter which one it is. It, it's still the same process, okay? Again, steps one to four have to be done no matter what, whether you're hiring somebody or you're not. If you're going and you're like, I need to hire somebody uh, and you're hiring somebody and you don't do steps one to four, you are bound to number one, waste your money. You're going you're gonna to waste your money because you're going to take more time to get something done. You're going to have more back and forth and it's going to literally burn money and burn time, which is really unnecessary. Now, we will focus on the homepage uh, because obviously it's only so much time, but the, the one page is the one thing you're going to have to have no matter what, right? There's always one page on the website. Sometimes there's more, but there's at least one. And let me just kind of take you through that. So, the, the thing about the homepage is really three main things that you can think with in terms of the purpose. And this is kind of like the goal, the goal of the website. Why, why are you even doing the website in the first place? Usually there's three reasons. Number one, you either want to simply build an email list. Now that could come under the banner of uh, a, a webinar, like a free training or a PDF or a mini course, anything along these lines. I can tell you right now, just to make it really simple for you, if you don't have a lead magnet, there is a very simple solution. You're going to, after this, like after this call, you're going to go to Google and you're going to type in docs.new, right? And then you're going to type in two, three pages long of whatever knowledge you have and your expertise, something of value, two, three pages, once you have it created, you're going to download it as a PDF, and that's your lead magnet. Don't overcomplicate it. Keep it really simple. You can also do the same thing on Canva if you like, either Canva, which is what you're seeing here, or using um, Google Doc. That's where, where you, how you're going to do it. Okay, really simple. If you're not sure how to do a lead magnet on Canva, I'm going to show you a little hack. It should really take you literally an hour to set something like that up. So let me just log in properly. So you're going to go to templates. You're going to go to, let's say, worksheets as an example. And in the worksheets, you're going to have a lot of different templates. So if you've got some sort of a checklist that you can use, find something that works and follow it. You can also type in the word guide, for example, and you'll have different guides that will come up. And you'll also notice that some of them have multiple pages. So you can see how it's actually moving. So this one is a four page guide. This one, one page, one page. Yeah, you get the idea. So depending on how you go through, you'll find that there's going to be multiple pages for some of them. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that to keep it really simple. If you don't have a lead magnet, like if you're going to listen to this call, you're going to be here for an hour. If you don't have a lead magnet, by the end of this call, spend two hours to create a lead magnet and tell me that you've done it because... It's all about implementation. Listening to me, listen to everybody else, total waste of your time unless you take action, okay? So that's step number one. Step number two is if you wanna sell your product or service, whether it's a course, membership, ebook, or whatever. So that's the second possible goal. Now, if you've got no product to begin with, uh, selling your time is a wise way to go. And selling your time means getting on a Zoom call and doing a coaching session, something like that. The reason that's really valuable is because number one, you get paid for something that you can offer immediately. Number two, you also get to do the most important part in your business, which is talking to your customers. And this is something that's really, really, really critical. And if you look at this page, for example, yes, I had the assets ready, like all the content ready and stuff like that. But all the text that you see prepared for this website, this text is based on speaking to hundreds of people on the phone before I even wrote the copy for the website. Now, it doesn't mean you need to wait to talk to 100 people. It just means that that should be your focus at the beginning because your copy, the text for your website, if you haven't actually spoken to people, Honestly, your copy is going to be hit or miss. So it truly doesn't matter. The main thing you want to sell on your 
on your um, website at the beginning, if you haven't spoken to people, is to get people to talk to you, make an appointment to actually speak with you. Because your copy for anything else is going to be hit or miss. Um, I know there's so many people that come to me, they're like, I really struggle with copy. And the truth is they don't struggle with copy at all. Number one, they have either haven't spoken to their ideal customer enough to actually know what they're talking about yet. And that's okay. We all start at zero, okay? I didn't do websites. Like I I didn't do anything tech-wise until two years ago, right? So we all start at zero. And the second reason is you might have the information, but you need help in understanding how to download it out of your head so we can piece it together. And we will get to that on step three, which is the assets. So the first step of the framework is the goal. Get crystal clear on the goal. When somebody arrives at your homepage, what do you want somebody to do? Like, do you want them to book an appointment? Do you want them to give you your email? Do you want them to buy something? Get crystal clear. And ideally, when you're getting started, pick one. Don't do four. Don't do six. Don't do five. Do one. Just one thing, okay? If you don't have an email list, for example, it is strictly email list or an appointment to talk to you. And that's it. That's all you should be focusing on and talking to people. Okay. Now, I want to go through a little bit uh, and take a high level overview here. What is actually a website? And I want to give you a, a different perspective, which I think is really important to understand when you're building a website. A lot of people associate website with technology. Okay. And I want to take that away for a moment. Even though, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tech person, you know, people know me as the tech guy, but I consider myself more of a relationship guy, right? Like, I'm more of a get to know somebody, learn about their problems, and see if I can be of assistance. And if I'm not, see if I can point them in the right direction. And if I can, figure out how I can help them in a way that makes sense to them. And it's a win win, both for, for me financially and for them to solve them a genuine problem, which would have taken them a lot longer or more expensive to solve, basically. So instead of thinking about technology and your website being technology, think of your website as, as an extension of you. Your website is you, but in the digital world, okay? On the internet, this is you. So when you're thinking about what happens in the offline world, for example, you probably have been in shopping malls or whatever, where somebody comes up and says, you know, have a little taste of this little food or whatever. And that is a free sample. That physical world activity is equivalent in the online world to a lead magnet, giving them a freebie a sample to taste so they can become like enticed to maybe buy the actual product. Okay. So think of anything that goes on in the physical world, in the real world is simply something that you translate into the online world. And if you think about that from that perspective, you will also, I think you'll feel more better about the fact that you don't have at the beginning a website that is like all the big gurus. You don't, you don't have anything fancy and you're not gonna try and do that either, which is where people can get like the procrastination that goes on when you, you want to, you want, you know, you know, someone else's website is so amazing. You're like, I want that website. And the truth is you are in a totally different stage in your business. Why bother? Just focus on the stage you're in and do something simple to get going. And as you're getting more experience in the real world, i.e. talking to people, your website can grow. Okay. Now I'm going to show you um, a little bit of how that continues to grow in a moment. Let's move into the next step. So we're going to look at um, the next step number two of the framework, which is mapping out the pages. Once you've actually um, figured out your goal, okay, I want to build a list or get an appointment or sell my product or service or whatever, you can map out your pages. Now, I've got a fancy thing here to show you just because I want to visually see you, but give me one second. Go old school. Just grab a pen and paper, sketch it out. It's all you need to do, okay? Really simple. Literally grab a pen and paper, sketch it out, and that's how you should do it. Now, I'm going to show you the, the map out of the pages of my Zemler homepage, just so you can kind of see how it works. And I'll show you it here, and then I'll show you the reality, and I'll show you how I'm uh, building it as well. So the homepage has basically four different call to actions for four different categories of people. 
Number one, there is the lead magnets, which is checklists, where I want people to download checklists for, um, and I'll show you the checklist in a moment. And these checklists are basically the checklists you need for the assets for somebody to build their website. From there, it takes them to a training website creation training. And for them, it sells them a 14-day challenge. So that's the funnel within the website. The second call to action on the same page is a straight sales page. If somebody wants to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, it goes to a sales page, checkout page to buy. That's the funnel for the one-on-one -on -one service. The third one is my tech support membership. So I have a, a membership where I provide an under 24 hour tech support where somebody can ask me a question and I will record a tutorial for them, you, even using their account if needed. And they can get that sorted in under 24 hours. And it doesn't, it does, it's not applicable to Zendler or whatever. It could, it's applicable to any tech support because some people have other issues and, you know, whatever. There's different tech stuff that you run across in business, right? So this is the third thing. And it goes to a checkout page. Right now it's a wait list because maybe the cart is closed, but it goes to a checkout page or a thank you page, depending if it's open or closed. And the third one is people that arrive at my website and maybe they're not New Zealand customers at which point I have them go to an affiliate link. Very simple, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you how I've built this page so I can walk you through the homepage uh, in a moment. Uh, but before I get there, what's important to know is you need to have the step, the third step, which is the assets. Now, just realize one thing here, you wanna map it out. You wanna map it out first before getting the content so you can visually see what you want to populate. Now, before I forget, let me show you another super cool hack. Now, you're going to love this one. So if you're wondering how to map it out, I'm going to make your life so freaking easy. It is ridiculous. All you got to do is go to Canva, search for website. Okay. Now, you're going to see there is different types of websites. You can look here at simple, modern, minimalist, colorful, corporate, professional, whatever. I'm just going to pick one. It doesn't really matter. Now, let's just say that I'm going to click on this and I'm like, okay, I, I like this homepage. Let's just say. Now, the homepage realize that this picture can be replaced with another picture. Like, it doesn't have to be this picture, obviously. I've got a lot of random stuff on Canva. <laughs> you just have to bear with me here. I'll just go find a picture of me. There we go. So let's say this is the picture and then I'll put uh, around Bukai and then let's say helping uh, people get their website done or whatever. And then no experience needed or whatever, right? Some sort of sub headline. Okay. This is now the first section of my website. Now there is the next section of the website and that section will be whatever I want to say. Now, let's just pretend for a moment, you see the third page, the fourth page, and all that. Now, let's just say that I see that, or I see that, and I'm like, mm, I really don't like that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on templates. I'm going to click here, and I'll have a look. Let's look at other contact us options. So maybe I would like this one. And then I can see, okay, yeah, I like this one better. Now, if I don't like this one better, I can just keep going to the next one and see if there's another one. How about this one? I like it, I don't like it. No, okay, move on. And then you just kind of keep going and you can figure out and you basically map out the different sections of your website. So think of your website like Legos, okay? You basically have its sections, okay? Now, just to really make it clear on the sections you're looking at, in New Zendler, the sections we're talking about is the sections in blue, okay? So this, what you see here in red is one section. What you see here, like this piece of text, which is a bit of a large one, it's one text. This video, again, that's one section. This one is one section. This one is one section. So if you think about it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because that's the footer, okay? So basically, you're going to go here and you're going to end up with five pages, six pages, but each page, it's not actually a page, it's a section that you would then build on New Zendler. Now, this is really important to actually visualize first because it's easier to maneuver 
and it's more fluid on how you want it and the look and feel and you can and stuff like that okay so that's how you want to do it and that's uh, my recommendation when i'm talking about mapping out uh, let me just go back to the slides when i'm talking about mapping out the sequence of the pages you then also want to map out the individual page on how you want it to look as well okay once you have that mapped out you can start thinking about step number three which is the assets now obviously um just as a point like this might change like you know you're not locked in but have some sort of an idea it will make your life a lot easier if you have at least some sort of a visual okay now you then want to gather the assets now i've got a couple of checklists which uh, are the assets and i'll read it out to you basically so first of all it is the favicon which if you don't know what a favicon is it's this little guy right here um or this is the loom favicon this is my website favicon if you look at i don't have a new sunlight thing open but uh, you, you get the idea Th those are the different ones this is google sheets and so on okay so uh favicon logo get a logo font um, like choose a font you can always use canva for the font like you can actually look at under text and then click on one of the text and actually see and pick one of these now with new zendler what i suggest is you actually pick it and new zendler um, if you don't know how to do that you simply go to the branding section so uh, let me just click to return to site uh, let me just save this Uh, so you do it under site, branding, and then you do those things here. Logo, favicon, choose your font, choose your colors, and so on. Okay, so that's how you wanna you wanna do that part. Uh, the next thing is also if you have any nice images of you, you should have nice images of you ideally. So for example, I have. Let me just do a search, for example. So you see here, I, let me just see if I can make this a bit larger. There you go. So these are images that I had like a professional photographer take of me, for example. And you know, you wanna have some sort of assets. It's not critical. You probably have some photos that will work good enough for now, but at some point you wanna invest in a professional photography as well. If you're just getting started, please don't overcomplicate this and think you don't, you need to get professional photography first. Just do something simple and you'll be fine, okay? Um, then you've got also um, getting clear on who are you serving, who is your not your customer, who is your customer, what do you sell, what is your customer existing situation, and like what is their current situation that they're struggling with, and what is that they want to improve in their life, and how, what, what is standing in the way, okay? So there's different types like that that is relevant. Your pricing, what do you offer, what is your guarantee? Any bonuses? Things along these lines. Um, on a sales page, this is a website preparation checklist. This one is a sales page template. So the headline, sales video, call to action, who's it for, who's it not for, all the FAQs that you get asked. Now, let me just tell you something. Let's just talk about that for a moment. This is going to be a little bit sidetracking from website homepage, but this is like so freaking important. So remember how I said at the beginning, you got to talk to your customers, right? Now, there is a a hack, a, a, a strategy, a system that you can use to be able to always have the content for your social media and your publishing so you continue to add value and attract more people and find your voice and all of that. And that is a checklist called FAQ Bank. So when you're talking to your ideal customer, let's just say I'm talking to somebody, I'm doing a strategy call. What happens is after that strategy call, they in, in the conversation, they might have asked me two or three questions and I answered it face to face or on Zoom. That's great. After the call, you must have a spreadsheet like this. We actually list the questions. You have to list the questions because that is the different things you are going to need to answer on your sales pages, on your social media posts, on your courses and all that. Your customer questions, queries and challenges is the secret to your copywriting, to your offer, to your clarity, to your everything, okay? Because it's all about transitioning your customer from their existing situation they're in to where they're desired to be. And those questions and challenges is what's standing in the way 
of two things. Number one, that I'm getting the results, but also number two, you giving them the clarity that you are the person to actually help them with it as well. Because if you have a customer that shows up to your website and they're confused by the end of it, they're not gonna pay. End of story. It doesn't matter if your offer is the best freaking offer in the world. If your offer is not clear, you, they're not gonna pay. End of story, okay? Now, let's go back to the checklist. So this is step number three, this is the assets. Now, here, the step number four framework is all about inspiration, okay? Now, inspiration is about finding other people's websites that you love and figuring out what you love about them so you can do something similar or better. Now, it doesn't mean that it has to be competitor. It can be something in totally different niche and you like it, okay? Now, I'll give you a really, really quick example. I saw someone else's website. Let me just see if I can find it. Okay, there you go. So I saw someone else's website and they had this super cool thing. They didn't have all of this. They had only one thing. And basically, let me show you what happens. So when I clicked on that share, it said share with your biz besties. That's what it said on, on a webinar funnel. And when I clicked on it, I saw a subject line like this, a text and the actual link automatically with one click. And I was like, oh my God, that is so smart because somebody just came from my funnel. They just registered. If I'm doing paid advertising, that registration might've cost me $5, $10, $20, $50, whatever, okay? If they share it, that reduces my advertising costs. Now, if I didn't pay for advertising and I did it through organic strategies, that's still effort that I had to put in. So now I got a lead like that. And this thing, I thought this is so good. On my thank you pages, I need to have a share button. Now they only had share on Facebook and share on email. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do it better. So I did share on LinkedIn, share on Pinterest, Twitter, email, Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram as well. Okay. Now what I did is I did a search to figure out how to do this. And then I replicated it onto my website. This is a classic example of understanding this step number four, which is inspiration see what someone else is doing and figuring out what you like about it, okay? Um, another example is you might have heard of uh, Video Ask and um, I don't have any uh, a Video Ask. Okay, readily so available. Video Ask, oh, actually, no, I do. Hang on, is, you'll see it pop up in a second right here, I think. Yeah, there you go. This little thing right here, like a welcome video message when somebody arrives to the website, right? I really like that. I saw it on a website of somebody. He's not a marketing guru, but it's sort of a personal development guru. Um, and he's got a really good book. I forget the name now. But anyway, it was a really good book. I listened to it audio. And I went to his website to check out the resources he had. And he had this cool thing. And I thought, oh, my God, this is so cool. What is it? I researched it and so on and figured out what it is, signed up for it, and have been using it ever since. I use video ask just so you know to collect testimonials and reviews basically that's how i have my my testimonials um so then that's inspiration now reverse engineer is the next step and this is where people can get stuck and overwhelmed and this is why i'm saying at the beginning steps one to four do it on your own figure this out as much as you can this stuff like reverse engineer and the build this is where um, sometimes you may need to hire. That's what, what people hire me for, really. Number one, it's for me to teach them this framework, okay? And now I'm turning it into like more of a, a coaching program type thing and checklists. But in reality, the, the reason people hire me is for this part, which is reverse engineer. Because sometimes to figure out how something is built requires going and looking behind the scenes. So, I mean, I'll just show you just so you can see. If you actually right click on this website and click on view page source, you can actually see how things are built. Now, I'm not a coder or a developer, but there's different little hacks to figure out what's what. So I, I, don't, I don't actually do any coding at all, but I can kind of figure out what's what. And this is where it can get really complicated. Like if I, I can't even do a training session on this, 
Uh, but reverse engineering, figuring out how somebody did it, that is the critical piece to figuring out the website. Now, what I'm going to do instead of teaching you how to do reverse engineer, I'm going to reverse engineer and show you my own so you can see how I built mine on New Zendler. So you can see each element, how it's built. So first of all, you'll notice here, this is a section, okay? This is a heading, right? Now on the heading, let's just click on it for a moment. You'll notice a few things. Number one, you will see that the letter spacing, there is a little bit of spacing in between each letter. If I was to space it out even more, you'll see that it gets even wider. So I do number one on that one. You'll notice that there is, um, that it's centered, right? So this, so this section of alignment, it's centered, okay? So this is how you know what it is. If you want to figure out someone's font as well, I might as well show you that one as well, because that's a pretty easy one. Um, Oh, let me just save this. Okay, so let's just say you want to know what font I'm using. You can download a Chrome extension called Font Awesome, and you can actually hover over and see what is the font that I'm actually using. Now, if you click on it, it will actually also tell you um, the size and the color as well. So that's another really cool way to know what's going on on the website. You see, this is Montserrat. And this is uh, size 22 in white. This one is Montserrat size 66 in orange. So you can kind of also figure out little things like that. This is a Chrome extension called font, uh, no, what font, sorry, not font awesome. Uh, what font, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the editor. The next section is this section and how it's built is simply um, oh, let me show you another important part. Once you click on something, I usually start from scratch. You can definitely use the, the templates here. They're really good templates. Um, I personally usually use this, uh, but it varies. You're welcome to use the other one. So once you click on it, this is section. And then when you click on the row, that is the elements, not the elements, the rows that I'm referring to. So you've got 50, 50, uh, 33, 66. This is 333. Three, three and so on, 444, four, four, you get the idea. So let's just delete this section. So this one, I've got heading, and this is heading, um, and then this is 666. Six, six, six. This is also heading. Now this one I probably should have done as text, but you know, it was a bit of a rush, I did it as heading. So this is just one giant text. Now here, you'll notice that I highlighted something. All I did here is basically go like this, and then click on this and paste in a link and type click on open in a new tab. Now, this is really important. You want to understand the reason why you would do open in a new tab versus not open in a new tab. So here, if I want, I'm, I'm giving people to go to my YouTube channel, check out my testimonials, whatever. I don't want them to close this website. Because of that, I will have it open in a new tab. Now, if this was a sales funnel where it's a sales page and then I want them to buy something, then I will not open in a new tab. I will want it to be on the same tab. So that's just another important piece. Here, I uh, then I did finished here. And then this is a new section. This section is strictly a video, okay? Uh, and the video, let me just see. Let's go to media library. The video you will notice if you click here, this is this is honestly media library. I just gotta say is like, you've got the best media library feature of any tool on the market. It is just freaking amazing. So um, you can tag everything. You can update the thumbnail as well, select a frame, upload a custom thing. So I've created this on Canva and uploaded it basically. And again, if you notice the thumbnail, it is carefully chosen. So it's different to other things as well. And another thing that I'll show you here, not this page, sorry, is notice here, I had it as gray thumbnail, but what I wanted, oops, let me just do something. What I wanted is if you look here on settings, Notice that I did a border, border style. So I did a border width 
So I did this width right here. So it's kind of like the bo boxed. So box the video a little bit, make it number five and make it orange. Okay. So this is something that I knew when I created the thumbnail, it's going to be like gray and then orange and then the white will be background. And then this one, this was chosen carefully because I knew the box was going to be an orange. This is why it's so important that you map things out before you start, because all these things make a difference. Now, obviously, what will happen is you'll start mapping it out and you might be like, oh, that looks ugly, you know, and then you want to change it. That's cool. But do the preparation first and it'll just make your life a lot easier. So that's how I did that. It's just a straight video and nothing else. This one is another section. Now, this is strictly an image on Canva. Now, let me show you. This is, this is, um, let me see if I can find where I created it. Hang on. Okay, there you go. So this one, here is how I did it. Uh, let me just duplicate this page and then I'll actually show you how I did it. So you're going to go to elements and you're going to search for the word frame. Now you'll see a whole bunch of frames here. Computer, mobile, this book. If you ever wonder how to set up a little book, like your freebie or PDF, this is how you do it. Really simple. Okay. Now, once you drag and drop it, let's say this is the book, you can go to uploads. Let's find my picture. Uh, there you go. You put the picture and it basically puts itself straight in. Now, obviously, if you want to have like an actual book cover, you will create the cover on the correct size. So the correct size will be, let's say, search for book cover like this. And then you will create the cover. And then once you download it, you will then upload it back to Canva here and upload it. So. Let me just show you a real example. Let's just say this is the cover. Let's just say that we're happy with this cover. Now, this requires tinkering. You might mess it up. It might not look good. You'll have to play around with it, but I just want to do a demonstration. PNG, download it. And now we're going to go back here. And then we're going to drag and drop it here. Here it is. Okay. And this is the book cover. Now, obviously, this is looks like not, doesn't look very good, but the point is that you'll need to tinker with it. And sometimes you can actually tinker with the sizing like this to make it like that. And it actually looks not too bad the way it looks. But again, this requires a little bit of tinkering around with um, this stuff, okay? So you just need to be aware of that. Now, what I did for this one is, you see this, this text, website preparation checklist, sales page outline. I simply created it here like that. I downloaded it. And I upload it back here. So I'm going to detach. Let me just detach this one, the image. So you see, this is the image. Okay. I'm going to put it back. And then I made sure of it, the sizing, because I didn't want it to be stopped from that. Now, this, what I did with this part, the website preparation checklist, I went and I did, let me just show you. So this is the website preparation checklist. And there is a way to make this small like that. So what I did is I increased the size to make it bigger like that. Oops, did it went a bit too much, basically. And then I took a screenshot like this. And then I uploaded it to Canva. Now, here's a little hack for you as well with Canva. You can actually upload it directly once you click it. Let me just do it again because it disappeared before I had a chance. Uh, let's just say I'm going to take a picture of this. And then I'm going to literally grab it and drag it straight in, basically. Okay? So that's another way to just speed up your process. Okay? And in this one, I took the sales page outline, which is this one. I took a picture. Again, I think I just made it bigger, basically. Oh, no, what I did is I took a picture of this right here. So I took a picture of this part so people can't, that you can't actually read it. 
and then I uploaded it, okay? So that's kind of the how of how I got this little thing. And when I downloaded it, I downloaded it like this. Notice that it's page 47. So you go to PNG, click on this button, scroll all the way down, page 47, and then make it transparent background. This is really important because let's just say for a moment, obviously that wasn't the case with me, but let's just pretend for a moment that you want the background to be a different color. So let me just show you. Let's just make it light blue, okay? Because it's transparent, it still looks good. If it wasn't transparent, you would see this as white cover and it just doesn't look good. So you wanna download something like that as transparent, okay? Now, obviously I didn't wanna do it as blue anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but I always, you wanna have the options if you choose to do it that way, you can, okay? So just download as transparent, it'll make your life easier. And then here I did a link. This is a button, this is the next element. It's a, it's a button, so you click here. Now on a button, you click on design, pick the one that you want, and only then you start styling it the way you want it. So in this case, again, letter spacing is one, font 24, bold. I like two buttons, I like to do it bold. It's usually what I do. And um, make, make the width, instead of full, you wanna make it normal, okay? That's just my preference. And notice that I did a little icon, icon here, icon here. So this is a download icon, and this is a like open in a new page icon. Now I'll show you how to find those icons. So you click here on icon left, and basically you click here, and then here you can actually search. So um, for example, I was building a horse website for somebody a couple of days ago. If you search for the word horse, you'll find icons to do with horse, right? If you search for dog, you'll find dog, cat. Let's see if we find a cat. Yeah, we got a cat. Let's say we have moon. So we find some moon items. So you can get really clever with your buttons, your bullet points as well. It's another little cool hack. This one is obviously just download. So I just did a download like this. I can also do PDF. I think there's a PDF one as well. Let me just have a look. There you go. So there's a little PDF as well I can do. So there you go, okay? And then for, to create this one, I search for the word link. And then I found this one, okay? So that's that. Now this one, I wanna open in a new tab because remember, I've got four call to actions on this page. So every one of the call to actions I have on this website, it is all opening in a new page. Now, this one, so this one is another section. Now, how it's broken down is, notice how it is, it's uh, the blue. You got the, the, the sections, the, um, the columns. Here, this is an image. This is a header. This is bullets. And again, the bullets I showed you. So you basically click here on settings, choose the icon. So I just search for the word uh, check. I think that's what I searched for. Yeah, click on that. I can also do something different like this, for example. I, I, I don't know why. I mean, it, it's, it's all, it's all, it's all like beauty is, is uh, and design. It's a little bit opinionated. So, you know, pick what you like, but that's kind of how you would do it. And then this is their font. And then one other thing is the spacing of this FAQ. This is really important because the spacing to me is, is really important. Um, there's a way to do that. Um, line height, there you go. So by doing line height, let's just make it zero for a moment. And you'll see it's just awful. If I make it 40, it's just got a better spacing, basically. So I did 30 and this looks really good. So this is really important to do it that way. Now, let me just show you another thing. So you'll notice that when you're creating something that is two columns, basically in New Zealand, by default, everything is centered. So what will happen is that by default, let me just show you what happens. By default, it is going to be centered. So this image will be in the middle and this and, and of this column. So I wanted everything to be on the same level, same height. So you would go to vertical alignment and click on top and then we'll push it up basically, okay? This button, same thing, opens in a new tab and same thing like I showed you, okay? Now this one, next section, this one is a headline as well, same thing. Now here's the deal. This 
is actually an HTML code, <coughs> which, let me just show you how to do that. You click here on add element, you click on custom HTML, paste the HTML, click on it again, click on settings, click on change content, and then you paste in the code. Now, don't be overwhelmed with the code, okay? Um, this is, you would use that if you want to embed a questionnaire from Google Forms or Airtable or a calendar appointment from Calendly. So let me just, let me just do an example of what, what you could do, just so you can see. So I'm gonna open up, um, let me just do my free consult, okay? So I'm gonna open it up, open up my Calendly account. Um, I'm just gonna go to my Calendly and then you'll see how to grab it. This is important because remember there's three reasons you'd have the website, build a list, sell something, make appointments. If you do an appointment, this is a good one to know. So what you wanna do is you click on, once you create the, the Calendly, you click on share, you click on add to website. You wanna click on embed in line. This means it's gonna be embed on the website. This means it'll be a widget. This one will be when you click a button, it will pop up. So you wanna do um, embed in line. I mean, you don't have to, but that's what I would suggest to keep it simple. You're just gonna click on copy, go back to the editor, click here, click on change content, paste it in, update, click on save, and then let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna open it up, preview it, scroll down, and here it is, okay? No appointments this month, click, and it will all be inbuilt basically, okay? So that's how I have. And, and notice also, this is important, notice that my call to actions are very similar. Like, what do you wanna talk about? Do you wanna talk about my courses, my membership slash dot com truth tech support membership, my one on one done with your services, or my software consultation. So again, you, you, this is just about having alignment in your business. So you know what it is you're offering. So you would use it for Calendly. You can also do it for surveys as well. Uh, that's another great way to do it. So yeah, there you go. Now this is an embed. This is a really cool little. Um, this is a booklet that basically explains, this is like a, this is really a, a, an explainer booklet that explains, it's like a brochure, an online brochure that I created to explain my entire tech support membership, basically. And you can, you basically, you scroll down this way and you can read through the whole thing. Now, let's just go here. You'll notice that I also have a table of content as well. So people can actually look through the booklet and choose the page they want to go to. So for example, if they want to just get straight to the pricing, they can click and it goes straight to the pricing. If they want to um, learn more about the success path or who it's for, they will click and then they'll see the different examples as well. So this is a little PDF that I have online. Now this PDF is actually um, available online as a general thing, but I wanted to embed it on my Zenlo website to make it easy. And I'll, I'll explain to you the difference. Yes, I can have a link where they click and this opens up. And that's one way to do it. But in this case, with this website on Zendler, I wanted it to be inbuilt because it makes it, I just felt I just felt that it looks better that way. And it's one less clicks because you see, there's already one button, two button. There's already a button here. And I rather, instead of having a button that goes to the brochure and go to the signup page, I have a link that opens up to the signup page, or in this case, it's the wait list. I prefer that basically, okay? So this was a decision made because of that reason. So this is an embed code of a software that I use for um, creating online PDFs. And this is a button as usual. Let's go back. We're almost at a wrap. And then this page is headline, bullet points, button, and a picture. Now, let me show you something, a little hack, okay? Not a hack, I know people like hacks. What I did, once I created this, and I'm like, this looks good, I love it. I wanna use it again. If I'm using it again on this page, I'm simply going to clone it. 
right? And then click here and move it to the next part of the page that I actually wanted to be a part of, which is exactly what I did. And then all I did is I changed the text and changed the color. So here it's blue. Oh, here it's blue as well. So yeah, anyway, you get the idea. Oh no, it's orange, there you go. So that, yeah, I did change the color. So you see that I, I changed it. So that's what I did it and I, I just changed the, the picture. Oh, by the way, let me show you another hack. You, you might be wondering, where did I get this picture? This is a free resource. Go to undraw.co, click on browse, choose the color. Let's say your color is green. And then you got a whole bunch of options here. You can literally pick. There's literally hundreds of them. It is totally free. And again, you can do search. So let's just say you want to post, like a lot of you people here are doing community, like Facebook, private Facebook groups for your customers, right? So you can actually search for the word community and find, let's say this one, something like that, or something like a community. This will be a great picture for a community as an example. So this is a great little place to create all of that stuff. Now I'll show you an example of um, this website. So this is my done what my one-on-one -on -one service. When you click on it, you'll see this is my Zendler page where I explain my entire one-on-one -on -one service. And notice I've got like I've got all my testimonials, video testimonials, case studies, examples of sites that are built, how it works. And then I use that's what I used here: business strategy, plan your business, map your business. Help of copy, create lead magnet, optimize your site, build your homepage, create messenger chatbot, integrate Stripe, blah, blah, blah. So this is all really well, like I'm not showing you something that is just random. Like this is legitimately what I do and what I do with clients as well. And it just gives it a much better look and feel. Again, here you see the pictures, same thing. I Previously, I used Airtable for the grid of the clients, uh, but Google Doc for the purpose of how I'm working with people. Um, in a group coaching format, it just works better because I can create this little thing like use a template. So it's just uh, better that way. And I think that pretty much covers what I want to share. Um, the footer, the way the footer was created is, um, yeah, the footer, I'll, I'll leave that to another time. I think it's not, not as, um, you know, if you want, I got a couple of, I'm sure David has a couple of tutorials on YouTube. I've got a couple of tutorials on how to create that banner, like create the cookie policy and how to create the privacy policy and all that and get it generated. So um, I think I'll leave it at that. So how did we get to all of this? We got to all of this because I'm sharing you the step of reverse engineering. Now, I just gave you the under the hood of the reverse engineering of my Zendler website. Now, that's my website. Somebody might look at my website and be like, mm, I'm not a fan. That's all my style. I don't like it. I like a different one. That's cool. Everybody's different, if different niches, different personalities, whatever. But the point is that once you find your inspiration, you want to figure out what, how was this created? You know, uh, and this is really important. The last thing I want to talk to you about is uh, the, the building part. And this is I mean, obviously, all the tutorials and the techie stuff with New Zendler, you know, there's so many great resources, but I want to give you a really clear way on how you can build your page in a way that is very intentional, very organized, and will minimize the need for mobile editing. I have very, very little amount of mobile editing, basically. So here's the deal. When we look at Zendler, there is a section, blue, row, green, element, red. Think about, keep that in mind. Blue, green, red. Now, this is so, so important you understand that process because this is how you'll basically play with the Legos. This is Lego, that's all it is. It's nothing fancy, it is Lego, okay? And all you gotta do is click on the plus button. Let me just save. I love doing things live because you have real issues sometimes. <laughs> Always, Aaron. Always. 
uh, but anyway, so here is an example. So let's just say you mapped out the template, right? And remember, we mapped out the template for the website right here. And we like, okay, we want this how we wanted it. So picture, text, blah, 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 okay? So what you would do, you can do a couple of things. You can go to headers and actually find something that matches, or you can go to empty block, click here, and it's going to, first of all, populate the section, the blue, remember, blue. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna click on row, and then you'll have the option to populate half and half. Now, in this case, maybe it's a little bit more like this. Either way, even if you mess it up, that's okay. You can always just click on the green and then just drag it like that anyway. So it's, it's not the end of the world either way. And again, this is one of the, what makes Zendler so intuitive to build is once you get, once you understand, like, let me tell you, when I started with Zendler, I struggled. The moment I got clarity on what I just told you with the colors, blue, green, red. Once I got clarity on that, it was so easy, right? So this is really important to understand. Now here you will also do element, and now we're into the red. So we're gonna do image. We'll populate an image example. So let's make this image, for example. Um, it's not a great picture, should be smiling. <laughs> and then you want to put element. And I think my, my, my number of tabs is not contributing <laughs> to, to this slide. But anyway, um, click on element. And by the way, if this happens to you, don't feel, don't, don't get too frustrated. It, it happens to us all, you know? So it's okay. Just, ref, just save, refresh your page, log out, log back in. It, it will sort itself out. So it, it's okay. I've used multiple platforms. And let me tell you, everybody have little issues like that. And it's okay. Element heading. So I probably wanted to do something else. So let's say around the Kai. Next one, we'll do this one. Copy and paste this. And then we'll do the next one. Let's do this one. Now, here, there's a few things you want to consider. Number one, you want to make um, this on the left, like I had it, right? So you would go to alignment, make it left, click here, alignment, left, click here, settings, alignment, left, okay? Now, remember how I told you by default, it's all centered. So to make it all at the same level, you're gonna click here on settings on the green, the green. It's really important you notice that. Click on um, vertical alignment and top, and then you will move it up basically. Now, obviously the sizing here, it's not, it needs to be bigger. So here I'm gonna click on the gear. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna make this 70. And let's just say I want it to be a different color. I'm gonna make this orange like that. And then this one, I will make that, let's say blue. But also notice that I, I don't have the spacing here. And let's say make that uh, 46, okay? And then this one, again, let's make this one, the spacing a bit better. Okay, and no experience needed. And then under it, there is actually no call to action. I didn't put a call to action, but you can put a call to action, for example. And the call to action on here will be um, taking a button, clicking on a button. Now, by default, it's going to be the full width. So you want to scroll down and make it normal. Okay. But more importantly, actually, is you want to click on design, choose how you want it. You can do a 3D button. You could do a shadow button. Okay. I personally, like everybody's style is different. I like to use this one, rounded buttons. And then once I'm here, you can do the icon. 
So let's say this will be a PDF. So let's see, ebook or book, PDF. Okay, good. And then, yeah, that's what that will be. And then go to style and change the color to be something else. If it's more your brand or whatever, let's just make it this color. I don't like that color. <coughs> so make it red. Now you'll notice there is the thickness as well. So I think if I make this 200, it will be a bit skinnier. Oh no, that's the border. Border thickness. Yeah. Padding. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is the padding. So I, I don't want too much padding on mine. 10, 10. And padding on the left. Let's make it 15. And this one will make it 15 as well. Now, little thing that you should know, the more you mess around with the spacing, the more you mess around with that, the more painful you're gonna make your life with regards to mobile editing. So I recommend, personally, I try to avoid, like when I build websites, 95% of the time, I never move things like all the way like this. I, like I'd say 95% of the time, I just never, I just avoid it. It's just an unnecessary thing. Like, and, and you, people can get picky about that. Be like, oh, I want, I want it to look like blah, you know, like they, like they're how did, how you want it to look because you feel it's pretty. Look, you want you want a functional website that delivers your message and get, makes it extremely clear what it is that you do and what you want your website visitor to do as well. And then here, let's say download freebie. Okay, and then here you would do probably a pop-up in this case, okay? And then the pop-up, I don't have a pop-up set up in New Zealand, in my web, New Zealand website, but that's what you would probably do in more cases. Um, I think that's gonna be, you know, you can you can um, look at one of the Zenler tutorials on that, I think. I just wanted to show you a little bit about how you basically migrate it over from your visual mock-up to setting something up on the page. So there you go. I'm gonna delete this. Oh, by the way, if you if you if you create something like this, you can always use it in, in other pages as well. So for example, I'll give you this is a really important hack. One of the things that I mentioned at the very beginning is you want to talk to your customers and talk to them a lot, right? And then what you want to do is you want to collect testimonials, which is what I focused on when I got started. Like when I first started online, I didn't even know what to say on my landing pages. I had no idea. So my landing page was only my testimonials and a call to action button. And to this day, I mean, if you go to my Facebook page, to this day, I have one link and one link only, and it's this one. And this link is arambukai.com forward slash testimonials. And there's a video testimonial. I now have a little bit of text, but otherwise I just have reviews. That's all I have. I didn't even have any copy. And honestly, this was the, the case for the longest time. Now I have a little bit more, but for the longest time, all I had was reviews. So this is another thing that you can also consider when you're creating your first website. Like, honestly, let your reviews sell for you. You'd be just, you'd do just fine. Um, on, on the topic of reviews also is, um, it just makes, makes it a lot easier to do the copy at the beginning because you really don't know what to say at the beginning. I don't know what, I don't know about you, but I just didn't know what to say at the beginning. And I think a lot of you are in similar, similar shoes, right? So that's a really simple way to just make the text minimal and then testimonials. Let, let your transformation that you deliver people do the work for you. Um, yeah, so that's that. Oh yeah, so what I was saying, how I got to that is you can create your testimonial blocks and create really good testimonials because obviously the testimonials, you can use them on different pages. Once you've done it, click on save block as a template. And then I like to label something. So let's say uh, testimonial. 
and let's say testimonial one and then call it template so then you know it's a template for example okay testimonial two template testimonial three template or if you've got it differently like facebook testimonials for example versus let's say linkedin testimonials or versus google reviews right label this correctly it will just make your life a lot easier once you're actually looking for the custom blocks um now if you don't know what custom blocks are in case you didn't realize this is one of new zealand's killer features um you click here you scroll all the way down and here's custom blocks and you see all the different custom blocks that you may have saved basically i didn't save much because i don't have much because i just I still don't have those, but I've got a one pager in New Zealand at the moment. Uh, so there you go. Um, let's just go back to my slides. Okay, yeah, so section, column, element. Okay, keep that in mind and that uh, will make your life a lot easier. So there you go. That's what I had for you for today. Hope you got value from this.